Hey guys, welcome back to another recipe tutorial and today I'm so excited to be sharing with you my gluten-free rough puff pastry. It's perfect for making flaky, delicious, buttery pastry and I'm gonna show you exactly how to make it. Now the first thing you want to do is add your flour, xanthan gum and salt to a large mixing bowl and I'm using a plain gluten-free flour blend. You want to give that a good stir so that it's all mixed up together and then you need your butter. Now this recipe uses quite a lot of butter and as you can see I'm using a whole pack in this amount and I'm just going to cut this into cubes. You want them to be around two centimeters in size. You don't need to be that precise but it's just an estimate. Once we've cut this into cubes we're going to add it to the flour mixture but unlike with short crust pastry we're not going to rub it in. Instead what I want you to do is grab two butter knives and we're going to use these to kind of crisscross across the mixture and the idea is that you want to be cutting the big chunks into smaller chunks we're aiming for around pea sized but we want to make sure that we're rubbing flour into it so there's no raw edges of the butter eventually it should look like this now don't worry if you have any bigger lumps we want lumps of butter because that's how we're going to get our puff so the next stage once you've done this is to add some ice cold water now we're going to add this gradually and you want it to be as cold as possible so if you're making this on a hot day I would perhaps recommend pouring it from the fridge or putting it in a bowl with some ice cubes underneath to make sure it stays really cold. And the idea is to just add this bit by bit and use the wooden spoon to stir it in. You don't want to be breaking up the butter, you want to be always mixing the water into the flour. And you can see towards the end it's going to become quite sticky, that's when we get our hands in. But we've avoided using our hands for as long as possible because we don't want to make this mixture too warm. The key to making puff pastry is to keep it as cold as possible. So when it's all mixed in you'll see there's still lumps of butter visible in your pastry. This is exactly what we want. So it's time to get the first roll in. If it's a really hot day, I'd recommend chilling your pastry before this, but if not, crack on. Now you want to shape it on a floured work surface into a rough rectangle shape. Make sure you flour your hands and all the surfaces that we touch in the pastry, and then get a rolling pin, and we're going to roll this out into a long rectangle, about a centimetre thick. Now the exact shape doesn't matter too much, but I like to kind of nudge the edges in as I go along, just to make sure it stays relatively neat. But you're aiming for about a centimetre in thickness. Once you've rolled your rectangle out, you can see that there are the lovely streaks of marbled butter in the mixture. This is exactly what we're going for. And now it's time to create your fold. So the first thing you're going to do is take the shortest edge furthest away from you and fold it towards you into the centre line. You're then going to take the opposite edge and fold it over the piece that you just folded to create these three folds like this, a little bit like a letter. And then at this stage you want to make sure that your work surface is nice and floured and we're going to turn the pastry a quarter turn. Now it's really important if you chill the pastry at this point to remember to put it back down in the same position so that you can get that quarter turn in and I always turn it a quarter turn clockwise. Now once you've done that we want to roll the pastry out exactly as before to create our next fold and again I'm just gently nudging the sides in but don't worry too much about being precise. So we're going to fold this to a centimetre thick and then repeat exactly the same process. And just make sure if you've added too much extra flour that you just brush it off because we don't want to fold up too much flour into the mixture. And once you've got this, as you can see my pastry was starting to stick slightly so I'm going to chill it at this point. And to do that I'm just going to wrap it in cling film and pop it in the fridge for about half an hour until it's nice and chilled and then we can continue. Once the pastry is firmed up, it's then time to repeat that process one more time. So unwrap it from the cling film and flour your work surface again. And what you can do as well is if you do find that the pastry is sticking quite badly, you can do this between two sheets of cling film, which will just stop it sticking as much. So I'm just giving it a final quarter turn, and as you can see, rolling it out into a rectangle once more. It's really important that you always roll it in one direction, otherwise you'll end up losing those lovely layers, and you can see them towards the edges, how it's starting to form. It just is going to make the best puff pastry. So once you've rolled your pastry into a rectangle, it's time for one final fold. Don't worry if your pastry is getting a bit flimsy by this point, it doesn't have to be perfect. So we're just going to simply do those last two folds and then that's it. Your pastry is all folded and ready to go. And that is really as simple as it gets. Your puff pastry is ready to use and you can either keep it in the fridge for a few days or you can freeze it or you can just crack on and make whatever you like. So as a quick demo, I'll just show you how to make a couple of things with this puff pastry, which I will put recipes for down below. 
So when you're ready to use your pastry, you wanna roll it out nice and thin, and then you wanna trim the edges. Now keep those edges because you can either make them into excellent cheese straws, or if you want to reuse your pastry, make sure you stack them up neatly on the side so that you can re-roll them out, because if you scrunch them up, you won't be able to use them. And here I'm making some sausage rolls. So I've just made two large rectangles of pastry, and I'm gonna pop some sausage meat in the middle of each one. I'm then going to brush the edges with some egg wash and don't forget there will be a full recipe for this down below. This is just a demo to show you exactly how this puff pastry turns out. And once you've rolled them up, it's time to crimp the edges to make sure none of that sausage meat escapes and brush them again with an egg wash because this is what will make them lovely and golden. Now with anything with puff pastry, I would recommend chilling these before baking them because otherwise you might not get as good a puff when you put them in the oven. And as you can see, these have got lovely layers and they are perfect for picnics or parties. And another thing I love making with this puff pastry is cheese straws. You can either make this with the offcuts of your pastry or you can make your pastry just for making a batch of cheese straws. Why not? So with these, you just sprinkle them with cheese, cayenne pepper and salt. And as you can see, they puff up lovely and golden and they are just so tasty. I could not stop eating these when I was testing this pastry out. And also I made some apple turnovers just to show you how flexible this pastry really is. Whatever you make, I hope you really love this gluten-free puff pastry recipe. I'll pop the full recipe in the description down below. Make sure you subscribe if you like this video and I'll see you again for more recipes very soon.